welcome back everyone. I hope you guys are doing really well. Today I wanted to talk about a few changes that I made in the van. Just minor tweaks. And in today's episode, I'm gonna go about how you would convert your van into a camper van, which gains you the benefits of cheaper tax and cheaper insurance. Now, as you step in, there isn't a huge amount of difference. What I've done is I've taken this scaffolding board and I polished it up and varnished it just to put there, and I'm gonna build up a further guard so you can't really see the battery. Another little change was the back wall over there has now gone completely white, uh, completely white with like a sort of rub back effect. And I've also added in these little foot plates here that I've stained blue. So there's one at the front and there's also one at the back. Now I put the bits of wood there because I wanted them to cover up that bit of bare metal and the bit of carpet at the back that was getting completely mashed up. Um, I stained them blue because I want to go through for like a blue and green sort of like hint throughout the van. But yeah, these are some of the like the minimal changes. I also added this wooden bar that goes across the whole length of the van. But what should take this from a van to a camper van in the DVLA's eyes are the fact that on the door I've now got a permanently fixed fold out table. Uh, I haven't sorted out the resting leg side situation of it, but I'm gonna replace this bit of wood with like a fold out bit of wood, but that's a nice sturdy dining table now for me to eat at. So I can sit here. It's a good height for my legs. Get my chomping on. But I have had another little table. So if I have this side out, I've now got this bit which folds out and it locks in under there. And now I've got myself a little cutting surface to cut and prepare food on while I'm cooking. Now here you are, don't worry, I know I'll probably get a comment about it, but I now have attached the table to the door. So some of you might think, well what if someone tries to come in while you've got all your food on here? Well, I mean, to be honest, hopefully that won't happen. <laughs> but if someone does try and open it, the mechanism to keep this table out will be mounted to the door. So as you open it, the table will slide with it and it will stop once it hits the side. Um, but I don't actually see this happening. The reason you'd use this table is if it's like crap weather outside. Um, otherwise, I'd be eating my food outside if it was really nice. I mean, why wouldn't you? Um, the other reason why I put this here is because I can't see a feasible way of having it in the back without looking crap. But if I want to convert this to a camper van in DVLA's eyes, I need to have this table just to prove that I've got a permanently fixed table so I can convert it. Right, so onto the main point about this video. Now, obviously these rules are going to apply for me and I live in the UK. I don't know what the rules are in America or other countries, but in the UK, unless I have everything on this list mounted in my camper van in a certain way, I can't convert it to a camper van, but it's not illegal to sleep in my van or camper van um, when it's not classified as a camper van. It is illegal to sleep in it though, if you do have everything on this list and you haven't told them. Bit of an odd thing there, I know. But what you need is, you need to have a door to your living accommodation. So usually vans have a sliding door or they have a rear door. Um, your bed has to be at least 1.8 meters or six foot long. Uh, it's like longest point, doesn't matter about width. Uh, you need at least one water storage tank on board. Um, you need to have a seating dining area. Now it doesn't matter if, for instance, your bed folds up into a chair and that becomes part of your seating dining area, that's absolutely fine. You just have to have a seating dining area and a bed, whether it is a rock and roll or whatever it is. But they, these things all have to be permanently fixed. So the bed has to be permanently fixed to the van. The table can unscrew off the floor, but it has to be a permanently fixed table, i.e. it can't just be like a camping table you pull out and put in the van. Um, that's why I've had to screw this one to the door so it is technically permanently fixed. Um, you have to have some form of permanent storage, so my storage unit. You have to also have a permanent cooking, it's all permanent, I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to say permanent anymore because it's just getting annoying. You have to have cooking in your van, whether it's powered by gas or electricity, and you have to have one window on the side of your van. So I've got two. Um, I don't think they count the passenger seat glass because I think like they anything behind the bulkhead. But 
that means that now I've got all of these things fitted in my van so it would technically be illegal for me to not declare this and sleep in it and use it as a camper van. Whereas if I just remove a few screws and take this table out it's absolutely fine again. So, oh well. But it is really just that simple. So now, now that I've got all these things fitted I will be applying through the form and getting this all sorted out and I'll take you through that next. So this next part is going to only apply for people that live in the UK if you're trying to change your tax class. What you need to do is get your V5 document and on the inside here, section 7, you'll see it says wheel, pan and body type at the top. Now what you need to write in here is motor caravan instead of panel van. So over here I've got panel van written. And if I change this to motor caravan, that's all you basically need to do. It really is that simple. You just need to fill in that top line with motor caravan, motor caravan, and, and then they'll change it from panel van to motor caravan, and then fold that up, put it into an envelope, and you need to also include 15 to 20 photos showing the changes that you've done to your van and photographing the key parts, so like the permanent bed, the permanent cooker, all the bits that are in the list, Plus, you definitely need to get some shots of the outside of the van that show the number plate so they know it's your van. Um, then you need a cover letter explaining what you've done and also a list of the parts that you put into it. Um, it does sound like a bit of a faff, but really it isn't that hard to do. It's quite a simple job. And then once you do that, send that away to DVLA and four to six weeks later, they should send it back to you and you then get all the benefits like cheap insurance and cheaper tax. Right guys, this is my little scratch map that I am slowly trying to, but very unsuccessfully, as you can probably tell, scratch off to it's completely clear and I've gone to every place in the world. Um, I think that's be my ultimate dream is to visit every country in the world before I die. Later on, in the, well I say in a few, actually maybe in a couple of months, I'm gonna be traveling to Scotland to meet with some friends and they're hiring a camper van and we're gonna travel around a bit of Scotland. That should be absolutely epic. Um, I'm also in about a month's time traveling to Amsterdam to go to VidCon. But I want to do something more epic. I want to do something ridiculous. But what I'm planning is potentially in the summer driving up here, following around here, visiting Norway, all the, all the Scandinavian countries, coming down here and basically just doing a loop of Europe and seeing all of these countries I haven't seen yet. I've done Spain, I've done Portugal, Paris, and Italy, done all that. But all of this is still part of Europe. It's untouched and a beautiful bit of the world.